I think one of the benefits to these little six units is you're only having to buy one plot of land. You're only having to buy one lot. And then with one lot, you can make, if designed properly, a six unit building that is large. People want to live in it. It's super cost effective. You get great cash flow from it still. And you're still seeing those real estate returns, which can range kind of from that 20 to 30% annualized over five years. So it, it gives a low barrier entry point for people wanting to get into the real estate investing game without having to think, okay, well, I got to come up with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to be a partner in these you know, massive buildings that are going up. So welcome to the business ownership podcast brought to you by awareness strategies, helping you navigate the waters between entrepreneurship and ownership. Hey there, peeps. This is Michelle Nedelec, and I'm super glad that you're here with us today because I'm here with my most amazing guest, Mitch. Mitch, thank you so much for being here with us today. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. And thanks again for hosting me on your show. Absolutely. So give everybody the highlight of who you are and what you do for business. Uh, so my name is Mitch Hardington. I am the co-founder of Elevation Equity, and we are in the real estate development business. So we partner with investor capital to build and hold multifamily properties and make people wealthy through real estate. Yeah, who? <laughs> Love that. So how did you get into real estate as your thing? Oh, that's a that's a long story. So I'll try and keep it <laughs> short-ish. I'll just um, meet I myself, think... go for a coffee and you take care. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you don't need to be here for this part. Maybe just write down some notes and be like, okay, these are the follow-up questions I have. So for me, it started back in about 2007, kind of sort of fresh out of high school. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life, where I wanted to go. And I ran across this amazing opportunity to work with a custom home builder out in BC. So I started pushing a broom with this custom home builder and kind of over the span of seven to eight years, I worked my way up into project management. Uh, it was the owner, myself, and then our team. And we were managing multi-million dollar builds kind of across the lower mainland. Um at the end of year eight, I had this really great opportunity from him. He pulled me aside and said, hey, I think I want you to take over my company as my successor. This is kind of what the buyout plan will look like. This is what I think would happen. And me kind of being young and naive at the time was like, I think this is a really great idea. I should totally do this, but I should probably talk to my parents first because obviously they're my parents and they know best and absolutely this is what I should do. So like any good son, I talked to my mom and dad and I got the resounding no don't do that. It's terrifying. Don't be an entrepreneur. That's super scary because they were school teachers and they had pensions and they loved their summers off and they wanted for me what they had because they didn't really understand kind of the world of entrepreneurship. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to listen to you, mom and dad. You're absolutely right. You've never steered me wrong before. So I ended up quitting the job like completely just bold face. I'm out. See you later. I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to become a school teacher like mom and dad because I want summers off and I want a pension. I know. Absolutely crazy. So then I became a school teacher for a couple of years. Um, and then right around 2017, uh, while in the middle of becoming a school teacher, realizing it really wasn't for me and was like, okay, well, what do I want to do with my life? I was like, you know what? I was always really good at that building real estate stuff. So maybe I should kind of get back into that. And then that was the birth. That was the birth of real estate investing. That was the birth of buying, flipping, holding, building the birth of learning a lot, losing a lot of money, realizing that mentors were really important, realizing that roadmaps are super important um, and started to really learn the business. And then about two years ago, I kind of took all of what I've done since 2017, put it into a business and we launched about two years ago. I love it. Your old employer must have been a heartbroken though. He like, was. Yeah, I found a mentee and this is going to be awesome. This is perfect. And all of a sudden, bam, gone. <laughs> I can still remember it to this day because we were standing outside of the office in the parking lot having this conversation. And when I told him no, he like the look on his face was just, what? what? How could you turn this down? Like you're so good at it. Like you're going to own the company. Like I'm going to mentor you through the entire thing. Like this is literally like the silver platter handed to you with everything you could possibly want on it. Like it wasn't going to cost me any money. He was literally just going to pay me more every year and I would get more equity in the company. And then as I started to get more equity and I would get the payouts from that, I was able to buy more equity. Like the plan was literally laid out. And I was just like, yeah, I can't do it. And he just was like, okay. Um, yeah. Wild story. Oh yeah. The heartbreak, the heartbreak, but we're super glad you got back into business again and into the real estate side of things. Mm -hmm. And so when you're doing it, you're not, I'm assuming you're not on the uh, lower mainland anymore. Where, where is your business taking you now? 
So I currently live in Calgary. Uh, my business is based out of Calgary, but right now we are pretty heavily investing into the Edmonton market. There's just a lot of really great things happening there in terms of land acquisition. The team is really great up there. I've got a lot of really great contacts and we're able to do, you know, what anybody could do in Calgary for half to three quarters of the land acquisition price. The rent is almost the same. The economy is doing the same, if not better up there. So the investors are pretty happy with the, the direction we've gone lately. Nice. I love it. So when it comes to investors working with you, are they working on single projects? Are they working on multiple projects? How does that all kind of play out? Yeah. So most of the investors I have right now is we, I, I partner with them from the start and we kind of custom tailor what they're looking for. So like I said, I'm really in the multifamily space. So we started about six unit buildings and go up from there. And it really just depends on what the investor is looking for. Do they want to solely own a project together with me? Are they looking to be like a limited partner on a bigger project, kind of what are they looking for? What's their timeline? How long do they want their money to sit? How long are they okay with it sitting for? You know, are they looking for more equity? Are they looking for more cash flow? So really every project is kind of custom tailored to the people that I work with. Nice. Well, and I know the the six unit um, complexes in particular have kind of leaps and bounds kind of come onto the market as a thing, um, especially here in Calgary. And I'm assuming Edmonton has as well. From an investment point of view, what's the kind of benefit to that and the perks to it if people aren't familiar with them? I think one of the benefits to these little six units is you're only having to buy one plot of land. You're only having to buy one lot. And then with one lot, you can make, if designed properly, a six unit building that is large. People want to live in it. It's super cost effective. You get great cash flow from it still, and you're still seeing those real estate returns, which can range kind of, range kind of from that 20 to 30% annualized over five years. So it, it gives a low barrier entry point for people wanting to get into the real estate investing game without having to think, okay, well, I got to come up with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to be a partner in these, you know, massive buildings that are going up. So. And when it comes to the maintenance and kind of the day-to-day -day operations, do you guys take care of that as well? Or do you sign that off to somebody else? How does that work? Yeah. So that's part of the business model that we have is everything is done by us from land acquisition all the way through to tenant placement, tenant management, budgeting, accounting, quarterly reporting, taxes. It's all done by us. Money goes into your account. You get to get a quarterly report from us to see exactly how the building is doing. And we just, we run it hands off so that you get to enjoy the benefits of real estate investing without having to worry about, well, what are the tenants doing? What's my building doing? You just get the reporting and being like, yeah, I think real estate is awesome. <laughs> nice. I love it. So when it comes to Canadian in real estate and investing in particular, Alberta, in particular Edmonton, take the conversation anywhere you want to. Are there any differences that you've noticed other than kind of, yeah, the market's doing well, we're renting well. Are there any kind of outlying factors that you want to consider when looking at where you're doing business? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that people look over is they always think that I should invest where I live because people think that it's really good to be able to go touch it, feel it, look at it. But I've learned over my time that where you live necessarily isn't the best place to invest. You really have to look at the whole kind of scheme of things. You have to look at the GDP of the area. You have to look at the average income. You have to look at job growth. You have to look at land acquisition costs. You have to look at trades available. There's a bunch of different things that come into consideration when you're investing in real estate and just doing it in your hometown because you're there to me, isn't really a viable investment tool. It's not a great vehicle for building long-term wealth. Especially if you live in Vancouver. <laughs> Especially. Yeah. I, I, and that's where this all started for me is I started in, in BC. That's where I started building. We were in Langley, oh. Richmond, Surrey, and yeah, I, I don't know. I, and like people in Toronto, I've got a lot of great friends out there and it, it works. They've got some great things going on. But for me, it's just like, I, I don't see the I don't see the gold there yet. Right. Well, when your land acquisition cost is six times more than <laughs> your entire build out out here, it makes a substantial difference. Yeah. So when it comes to this part of it, what what would you say is your favorite part of what you do? Oh, my favorite part is absolutely the building process. I love, love, love going to see something and the process of the creation. When I get to go stand on a lot and it's just bare and then over like a six, eight, 12 month time lapse and I get to see this thing created, 
that, you know, I was a part of, I got to help with, it's like my dream coming to life and being able to, to see it. I absolutely love that thing. And then when people get to move into a home that they're happy about, there's a lot of like slum lords out there. But when I get to see tenants move into homes that are, they're happy to be a part of, and they're happy to call home. It's like, yeah, this is going to be a long-term thing for everybody. I love it. Nice. And what is the communication process that you have with your investors during that build out? Yeah. So it, it always starts with uh, a phone call and a conversation of like, Hey, this is something I might be interested in. And then from there, it's all about relationship building. So I build a strong relationship with kind of my investors first, and then they are advised of everything along the way. I'm a big believer in communication. So if something isn't necessarily going to plan, I want them to know about it like right away. When things are going to plan, I want them to know about it right away. I don't ever want somebody to, to feel like they're lost and being like, hmm, I haven't heard from Mitch in a while. I wonder what's going on. I want to be that forefront top of mind where people are, you know, building their security in me so that in five years, when we have all of our money out of this project and we're going into the next one, they're like, yeah, no, I just want to rinse and repeat and let's do another one. I've got all my capital back. Plus I still own the building. So let's do it again. Love it. Do you keep in touch with your tenants as well? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Um, again, they're, they're the reason why we do this. And I think if you're not building for a specific tenant, then you're, again, you're kind of missing the boat. So making sure that they're happy is how you make sure that they're paying their rent. So yeah. Always good I, thing. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I love it. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you about a Cinderella story of one of your clients. But before I do that, we're going to take a quick break. Are you running a business over seven figures, but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention. You do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap. They offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap. So I'm super excited to hear about a Cinderella story of one of your clients. Yeah, so let's, I'll go back a bit. So I was working with a client uh, a number of years ago when we were building a project and they were, how do I word this? Very reluctant. They were, they wanted to be involved in real estate, but they didn't necessarily want to be involved in hands-off. Like they really wanted to touch it, feel it, be a part of it. And just kind of through our process and showing them every step of the way, including them in the email, showing them pro formas, really spending that extra time with them to get to know them, get to know what they would like to do. We actually built this really successful building um, and it exceeded what they want. And I can't, I'd love to be able to share like exact numbers, but just, you know, laws and regulations prevent me from sharing these types of things and promising returns. But at the end of the project, they actually became a repeat client. Uh, they were so happy with the project and how it unfolded. They were so happy with the communication that we did, we did another one and we're hoping to be able to do another one here in a year or two. So that's, that's what I strive for. I strive for repeat people. I strive to bring people happiness and I strive to exceed their expectations. I love it. Well, and, and I'm thinking when you, when you get the ideal investor, it, it becomes easy to do, but a lot mm -hmm. of people are really, and it's thrown off by the whole real estate thing, especially in Canada, because it's so expensive. Like it's it's insanely expensive right now, especially mm -hmm. in Calgary and Vancouver, Toronto. Yeah, it's absolutely, it's, it's nuts out there. And I think that's why it's really important that um, people really understand real estate and really understand that it's more affordable than people think. So for example, some of these six unit buildings we're doing, I tell people to budget for $200,000. Um, and make that is an entire build out for us. So that includes lots, building, design, um, tenant placement. That is all of the fees, legal, lending, all of it into one because there's some amazing programs out there like the MLI Select program that are allowing companies to fund up to 95% of these projects. So especially in the real estate development game that I'm in, it is a lot more accessible than people think. You can buy a six unit building for less than buying some houses with down payments now. I was talking to, to a contractor the other day about doing a, an addition onto our house. And I'm like, oh, I think it'll be about a hundred grand. They're like, no, you're looking at a minimum 300,000. So even yeah. in that realm, I'd be better off to go invest with you, get a sixplex, get some rental, and then fund the, fund the addition onto the house. Cause the addition is not going to make me any money. 
No, exactly. And I think that's the whole like rinse repeat model, right? If you've got the, if you've got capital laying around, why not put it into something that you can own for 20 to 25 years at minimum, right? And a lot of people are like, well, I don't have that money. It's like, well, do you own a house? Yeah. Well, you probably have more than enough equity in your house to be able to pull a little bit out. The cash flow from the property will pay the difference from that home equity line of credit you're taking out. And now you own an asset in five years, which will pay back that line of credit. Now you don't have it anymore. And now you own a property and it literally costs you none of your own dollars because you just borrowed it from the bank. Like there are some really creative ways to get into real estate that people, um, I wish more people knew about. Right. Well, and peeps, if you're listening to this right now and you just blew your mind, I think it's really important that you sit down with Mitch, have a conversation because it's, it really is about understanding the resources that are there for you and why they're there for you, right? The economy needs you to build and there are incentives there for you in order to be putting your uh, economics into this in order to make it grow. So it's a beautiful thing. Um, I know people are going to want to start that journey with you. So how do they get that started? Yeah, the easiest ways are uh, you can email me directly, which is mitch at elevationequity.pro. Uh, you can head to our website. There's a, a form there where you can actually book a quick 15-minute call with me. We can have that conversation, which is elevationequity.pro. Uh, over on my LinkedIn is the other best way, which is just LinkedIn and then slash Mitch Hardington REI. Those are kind of the three best ways to get a hold of me. Nice. We will, of course, have all of Mitch's links in the show notes. So go ahead and scroll down, click on the links, open up in a new browser because we're not done yet. So much I get to ask you, and you kind of alluded to this, but I, I, want, I want the inside scoop of this, is at what point in life did you know you're a special kind of crazy enough to think that you could become an entrepreneur? Oh my goodness. You know what? I really knew it kind of early on when I was working with this company being like, there's more for me. I, I want more for my life. I don't want to, I don't want to trade time for money. Uh, like a regular J-O-B, I kind of want to be financially free, but I really didn't understand it until kind of that 2017, 2018 uh, housing trend when I was losing a whole bunch of money, but in the process being like, man, I'm so thankful for all of the things I'm learning right now. That's really when it clicked for me being like, yeah, no, this is this is what I'm going to do because I realized that if I could just pull together these few other pieces in terms of mentor, mentorship and growth that I could become an unstoppable force. I love it. And before I let you go, what do you think is the trend in real estate in the next few years? Whatever that uh, means to you. <laughs> yeah, I think the trend is is the one that I'm in. It's development. There's only so much land. You can only, you know, renovate so many houses. At some point, you have to add density to things. You have to, if we're going to keep growing the way we are, you have to build more houses. So if you're not in the space where you're adding more units to places, but then I think you're behind, but it's all about adding density in a way that is um, desirable, not the, not the, the cheap way. I <laughs> love it. You've been absolutely awesome. Any last words for our peeps? No, I just, uh, I'm so thankful that you had me on the show today. I really hope that, you know, I get to add some value because I know you have a great base of listeners out there and I'm really looking forward to kind of continuing some conversations with you in the future. I love it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And I know how valuable it is. Thank you. Awesome. Peeps, this is Michelle Nedelec. Thank you for being here with us today. Be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with your friends. We love helping entrepreneurs grow. Are you running a business over seven figures but still struggling with technology headaches? Pay attention. You do not want to miss this offer. This podcast episode is brought to you by Awareness Strategies, who is offering a custom-built digital adoption roadmap for anyone running a business over seven figures who's wanting to grow their business in the next five years. And it's not just a roadmap. They offer full implementation as well. If that scares the out of you, check out awarenessstrategies.com forward slash roadmap for more details today. The link's in the show's notes. Don't regret not doing this. Do it now. That's awarenessstrategies.com slash roadmap.